Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron and happy Frequency Friday to you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is gonna be a lot of fun. We have a lot to unpack, a lot to talk about, and we're gonna peel back every single layer. This company that I've been wanting to work with for a really, really long time, well, that door is finally open, and they sent me a bunch of gear that we are going to show off in today's episode. The company's name, I think it's pronounced Skahit. I think it's Skahit Audio. It might be like Norwegian, I'm not really sure. The gear is really affordable, and that's the very first thing that I noticed. And another thing that I noticed right off the bat, especially when I got in the gear, is it's beautiful. I don't feel like this is one of those situations where you're having to sacrifice because you're paying less for something that just kind of looks boring. All the gear looks really, really good. So, clean lines, simple, beautiful. Let's dive in and start with the very first piece. Alrighty. So this baby right here is uh, the Freya Plus. Here's what's cool about this. It is a tube preamplifier, but you don't need to run the tubes if you don't want to. You can actually run this passive and you can run it in a buffered mode. On top of that, what's really pretty sweet is this baby is fully balanced. And guess what? All the other gear that we're gonna be talking about today it's all fully balanced. Front panel is minimal. There's really not a whole lot going on. There is no power button on the front. The, uh, the switch to turn it on and off is on the back. You have a mute button and then you have a selector switch which changes from passive to a buffered mode and then enabling the tubes. You have a volume control and then you have a selector switch for your different inputs, your five different inputs. So that is the Freya, the Freya Plus from Skahi Audio. We'll move on to the next one. All right, this little fella right here is a DAC. This is a digital to analog converter. As I mentioned before, it is fully balanced, uh, also single ended as well. And it does have three digital inputs. You have USB, you have optical, and then you have digital coaxial. Again, power switches on the back. And then on the front here, you've got a button here to switch between your different inputs. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about this particular piece, and I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about the next pieces because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the system as a whole. I don't know how these individual pieces sound by themselves. I do know, and my first impressions are based on how everything is working together. So it is a multi-bit DAC. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I have no idea why that is important. I don't know what that means. I intend to find out and I will find out and we'll talk about that when we do the review. And again, affordable. I mean, this thing is 700 bucks for the deck, so not crazy expensive. It's, it's not crazy, right? I mean, do we agree here? This is not crazy, crazy expensive. One other thing that I wanted to mention about this guy right off the bat is, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's modular, so on the back here, these little connections can actually come out and you can upgrade them. So this really is, as far as I can tell, a future-proof DAC. And so that's pretty wild. And again, at the price point, that's a smart move by Skahi Audio. So well done, guys, that's smart. So let's move on to the next piece. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness sakes. All right. This guy is a power amplifier and it is kind of a class A amplifier. It's called a, a continuity amplifier. I'm not going to get into the specifics because I'm not qualified to talk about that right now. It is fully balanced. It is single ended. You have your five-way binding posts on the back. It's I mean, it's heavy. I mean, you guys know I'm a pretty tough guy, and this thing is this thing is heavy. <laughs> I'm not a tough guy. Are you kidding? Noodle arms over here. But seriously, this thing is hefty. So I'm gonna set it down and show you the last piece. Ta-da! Another one. So these are the uh, Aegers. A Aeger. Aeger from Skahi Audio. <sighs> Those Norwegians. They get crazy with their names. And uh, yeah, continuity amplifier. On the front here, this little button is a standby mode. So again, the power switch is in the back. You can put it in standby and then you can press the button. You wait a couple of seconds, you get a little blinky light and then it turns on and you're ready to rock and roll. And uh, yeah, so I have two of them. Now, why did I do that? Well, I'll tell you. Oh my goodness sakes. 
As I understand it, and I'm pretty sure that I'm right about this, running fully balanced in this rig that I've been sent over would mean that you actually need two of these power amplifiers. There is no way to do a balanced connection into one amp and end up with a stereo amplifier. That just won't work. And so you have to have two in order for this to work. Left and right balanced outputs into the back of each monoblock and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, for those of you that are familiar with class A, if we're talking about first watt, if we're talking about past labs, these are gonna be some of the giants out there that are known for class A amplification. They get up there, you know? I mean, the first watt stuff is reasonable. It, in my opinion, it's actually quite reasonable in price, but you're not getting a whole lot of watts. These guys, these monoblocks, if you're running them fully balanced as a monoblock, 80 watts. Is it truly class A? No. I've read over the marketing over at skiheataudio.com and they talk about biasing. They talk a little bit about how this, in their opinion, is better than class A. I'm not gonna argue with them because I'm not qualified to argue with them. Instead, I would say, hey, Skahi Audio, if you guys have an engineer that wants to jump onto our Tuesday Tech Talks and explain this, send us a video, by all means, we would love that. And I can promise you, guys, please let them know in the comments section, you guys would love to hear, what is, what is it? Break it down for us. What, how is it different than Class A? What does biasing mean? Why is it important? And how is this better than a Class A amplifier? So clearly, Skihi Audio, I'm just messing around. You guys obviously know this brand. And I refuse, I refuse to make any shit jokes in this review. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to the very end and Shit audio, you have no power over me with your fancy marketing and your, you know, marketing gimmicks and tricks and your clever little frequently asked questions. I know what you guys are up to and you can't control my brain. You can't do it, shit audio. So yeah, you guys are skahit audio from Norway <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it because I have your gear and I've got the camera. So ta-da, welcome to new record day. <laughs> This will be the last, this will be the last review that I do for shit audio. Anyways, I hope you guys know I'm just having some fun here. Let's just dive into the impressions and I even have some sound clips for you. So we'll get you guys some fancy B-roll and some sound clips and we'll have some fun with this. When I first plugged everything in, very first thing that I noticed before I even press play was I heard a little bit of, of tube noise. I know that it was tube noise because I'm very familiar with tubes. I've been around tubes for a very long time playing guitar and in the left speaker, I heard some crackling, some, some noise. We had a noisy tube. And so I shut everything down, waited for it to cool down. And all I did was I just reseated the tubes and voila, that fixed it. So if that ever happens, just a heads up, you know, just from somebody that's been around tubes for a while, you might think that the tube is bad. That's not always the case. There might be just a little bit of debris on there that's causing that crackling or that noise. And just by taking it out and reseating it or maybe moving it into a different position, you can sometimes eliminate that noise. And in my case, that's exactly what happened. And I've now put probably about 20, maybe about 20 hours on this gear. And it has been rock solid. I've had zero issues, no problems. So if we're talking about it from a functional standpoint, everything works out really well. The remotes are, hold on a second, let me get the remotes. This is for the Freya Plus, this is for the Bifrost. I don't know who the manufacturer is of these. I don't know who makes these remotes, but I see them pop up with a lot of audiophile gear. So whoever the manufacturer is is like, we like audiophiles, keep buying our remotes. They work fine. I like them, they're aluminum, they're substantial, they feel weighty in the hand, so they didn't just give you a piece of plastic and like, ah, here's a remote kid, run along. The very first thing that stood out, which quite frankly surprised me, to be honest with you, I was using the uh, JBL 530s, is I heard quite a bit of punch, like 
quite a bit of punch, dynamic punch in the mid bass and in the bass. And I didn't really expect that to be the very first thing that I hone in on. I didn't expect that to be the thing that stood out. And I was running at first in the tube mode. That's what I, I just wanted to go straight for the jugular and be like, I want to know what these things can do. And I will say this outside of that, that mid bass punch and that bass punch, everything else, at least early on, it wasn't super impressive. It sounded fine. There wasn't anything that was like blowing me away, but burning is a thing. And I, I'm at a point right now where I don't even care how it happens. It does happen. I don't care. I don't even care if it's me. I don't care if it's me and the gear. I don't give a rip about any of that. But what I am telling you is that sitting back down after letting it play for an hour, letting it play for two hours, letting it play for five hours, coming back and listening to it again and again, there were absolute improvements. There's no doubt about it. Things were just starting to open up a bit more. And that's when I started hearing a bit more clarity on top, started hearing a little bit more of that extension on top. And at the same time, those tubes were starting to, yeah, okay, we can throw, we can throw the holographic party, Ron. We have no problem doing that. And you know what? They don't. It, it does that. So this is a bona fide tube preamplifier. I hear that in the rig right away. Next thing that I did is I went to the passive mode and I'm going to be, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. It's my least favorite mode. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some folks out there that would dig it, but having gone from the tube sound, which was punchy dynamic, had that kind of holographic thing going on and had, you know, plenty of top end extension. It didn't sound soft on top to the passive mode. Everything got a little bit cold sounding and it just wasn't as lively. It wasn't as, yeah, you know, it didn't pull me into the music. And so not in love with the passive. I'm going to explore it a little bit more and see if things change over the long haul. But those are my first impressions. No BS. I'm just calling it what it is. Moving on to the buffer mode. When I switched from the passive to the buffer mode, which I don't know if I remember this on their website. So forgive me if I get this wrong. I think they make the claim that there's they're both unity gain, meaning there, there is no gain at all. I don't think that's true. I don't buy it because when I when I switch to the buffered mode, I'm convinced that I hear maybe a dB, maybe a half dB. There there is more volume. I'm convinced of that. And and to be honest with you, that's not the important piece. The important piece is yeah, there is a little bit of a change in volume, but more importantly, what was cold now has some life. I got, I got some meat on the bones to work with. I got something I can sink my teeth into. And as soon as I hit that, that buffered mode, even though there is just a slight change in volume, I am absolutely convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I can hear it every single time now that there is a tone shift going from kind of cold, kind of sterile to, okay. All right. We're going to give you a little bit of Barry White. Just a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna put some meat on the bones. This isn't gonna be so skinny sounding anymore. And I gotta say, I'm okay with that mode. I like the buffered mode quite a bit. Do I like it as much as the tube mode? No, no, I don't. I love the tube mode, and that's probably where I'm gonna spend the most time. But the buffered mode, if you want like no tube noise, no tube hiss, you want pitch black background, that would be your go-to. So I just want to let you guys know that the first impressions, early impressions of the gear is quite positive. And I've already tried those amps, 80 watts into every speaker that I have in house. Ooh. And I even did sound clips for all of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to release all of those right now. I've got plans for that down the road, but let me show off how this all sounds with the JBL 530s. Enjoy the sound clips. JBL 530s matched up with the shit audio gear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, 
that's a killer combo. Might need some subs. No, not. You do need subs. You always need subs. You always have to have subs, but check out, check out the presence that you hear in these clips. That's what I want you to hone in on is these things are firecrackers and there's something about this combo that just speaks to me. It just works and you get some presence in there. Having a blast with shit audio gear and early impressions are incredibly positive. I have tried the gear with seven different monitors that I have in house and uh, yeah, you better believe I brought out the Oticas and well, I'll save that for the review. Anyhow, we will see you guys soon next week. Frequency Friday is back on the menu. Thank goodness for that. I feel like I'm kind of getting back in the swing of things and Sarah and I are getting a great rhythm with the twins. They are doing fantastic. Natalie is cute as a button. She's freaking adorable. She has already melted my heart. And uh, Elliot, he started off like four and a half pounds and now he's 11, 11 pounds. So I guess he's trying to eat the house. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this kid. He will not stop eating. So I guess now's a good time to mention Patreon. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding, but the links are down below. <laughs> All right, guys. Had a blast with this one. Uh, shit audio. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys sending out the gear. I'm tempted to keep this stuff. I'm tempted to pony up if I can scrounge up some cash and just buy this stuff because it would be great to have this on hand whenever I wanna do, you know, more affordable stuff. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna have to run that by corporate and uh, see what she says. <laughs> it'll it'll probably be a, a no. No, you, you, you can't because Elliot's trying to eat the entire house. Thank you so much for stopping by. Appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys in the next video.
is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground Tell me 